Well, we're actually concerned with controlling the mind. Perhaps even further than that, we're concerned more with controlling the heart. Our inclinations, our feeling of being. I guess that's it. Our feeling is as close to our being as we can get. Our feeling indicates our values and hopes and fears at present. Our present being. And we want that being to be eternal. Beautiful. Life, abundant life. That sounds strange because life we think of as movement and change, but being we think of as in some sense static through time, although I've talked about changing of our being from one thing to another, improving our being to that which is eternal as opposed to transitory. And the values for that and the inclinations are something to do with what spirituality and religion sort of struggles to understand and achieve. Now, in times of old, we didn't have recordings, you know, film strips and uh, Wi-Fi, if you like, where we could just tune into something. Uh, memory sticks where we could just listen to again and again good music that would uplift, or good um, sermons and talks, or lectures, whatever you like to call them. I think we just say talks, that leaves, seems the least emotive, doesn't it? But I don't actually want to always strip out the emotive because the emotive is the essential of feeling and seems to determine what we think. We find, we seek out proofs and explanations for that which we desire. And that which we desire is, of course, very much emotive influenced, of course, by our experience in the world. But again, our feeling, our relating to the world. Now, we've, we've known, of course, that good company is a great help to changing our, our thought patterns and our feelings, our, how we feel, our emotions. So people would go to plays you know, uh, watch theatrical performances, and they would affect their emotions accordingly. And to some extent, of course, their values by what they heard and so on as well. But how they heard it and what they wanted and gravitated to depended upon their current being and was in a sense little influenced by transitory preoccupation with a play or a, a performance or company. You, you know, um, even partnerships like husband and wife and even very close ones like the retired, say, where they have all the time in the world, so to speak, they actually are not communicating continuously. They're in the presence of, but there isn't necessarily much interaction all the time by any means. Now, we have a technology where we can listen to something. We can simply call our auditory and visual environment um, well, unless, of course, pulled away by necessity of distraction, hunger and so on, we go and make something in the kitchen, we might turn off the recording then, you know. But possibly the TV or something, record player, or it's not called that now, is it? <laughs> Your music centre plays on, you know. Um, yeah. So it may not be interrupted. 
So the key thing that we haven't terribly successfully achieved is choosing our company. And the company now includes this extraordinary access to a choice of uh, recordings and uh, media, media, music, talks, and films, pictures. So the new religion is of that, and you'll notice Christianity, for instance, has gone that way. It used to be, you know, 50, 100 years ago, the church. Now it's not. It's, um, it's the television screen and possibly what you're casting on the screen from your phone of some worship meeting or some uh, Christian talk. You know, preacher, recorded. And you can listen to him at any time. You can listen to and watch um, your um, favorite worship group at any time. That's how company has changed. And to some extent, I won't say it's eclipsed, but it's pushed aside in, in some measure company that we used to have. You know, sister used to sing in the evening, perhaps to the piano. <laughs> Can you imagine now? Um, uh, Dad would give authoritative conversation and wisdom and talks. Uh, not um, what is now nationally, world-shatteringly spectacular, but um, <laughs> locally, yeah, very significant. We had nothing else. So your relating was to live people, whereas now it's to media, which, as you know, is despite um, interactive um, capabilities that have been developed to some extent, it's very one way. Except you can call the program. You might not be able to avoid the ads. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's a different world, isn't it? Our environment has changed and our religion changes accordingly. It's a smorgasbord religion. Uh, you know, I could be totally immersed in uh, Seventh-day Adventism or Pentecostal worship or um, intellectual philosophical analysis, uh, what we might call very liberal uh, theology, talks and discourses, or sermons of uh, any religion in the world, actually, but, you know, whatever tends to be in your, on your menu, in your mind, or literally on your device. So, a new development of religion is personalized, smorgasbord, we choose, and we need to be trained to call the tune to, in some sense, well, further our our happiness and uh, pursue what we value. What do we value? Well, broadly speaking, that which brings life and hope and um, peace of mind. Right, well, you need to be trained to call your media accordingly. We used to choose our friends. I risk saying that's less the major than it used to be. It may still be major, but calling your media choice is major too, to say the least. And depending on how individual and unique and distinct your particular pursuits might be, spiritually speaking, so to speak. Mm. 
so the more it will be dominated by your media as friendship because there's fewer friendships that you could find in the world in such circumstances. You know, if I'm the only um, Zoroastrian in, uh, <laughs> in Hamilton, say, I'm not a Zoroastrian, but I mean, you know, supposing I was, um, I don't know if there would be any, no, there might be one or two. Um, you know, your company would be extremely limited and possibly their view of it wouldn't be quite yours, so you don't get on too well anyway. Whereas what you're choosing from the media could be very specialised to your view. So religion has now become individualistic because of our technological developments. And our mobility, of course, I could up all and go and live in on a community in California, perhaps, if I so was motivated enough, etc. How amazing. Hmm. Look, it offers wonderful opportunity. You can be very much the choice of what you wish to be. But as my mum would say, and her voice speaks as great sage down the ages, <laughs> Secular, I'm afraid, but beware of what you desire, for you will surely have it. In other words, you may not have fully conceived what you're grabbing hold of, and uh, you may find it burns your fingers. So, you, greater freedom demands of you greater care, because you can't just rely on what's been working around you, because you're choosing, in a sense, you're choosing a different world. And it's more your choice than perhaps 100 years ago was. Which means, of course, individually, you can make very big mistakes. And I suppose we could say people do. But at the same time, perhaps they learn faster to adjust what they need to truly value. So in a strange way our technology can and may indeed be an incredible blessing in that it enables us to choose more efficiently towards something wonderful. But of course it's such a novel situation that the uncertainties are high, and the mistakes to begin with materialize and become legion if we're not careful. Very careful. Choose good company. It's now choose good media. Be very, very, very earnest in what you're choosing. Take care, love. Bless you. I think the old rule still holds. Whatsoever's good and lovely, think on these things and choose your media accordingly. But take care, things are not always what they seem. Hmm. Bless you. Thank you, Heavenly Dad.